So I'm picking up here where I left off before. We're going to move a little bit quicker. This thing's going to get a little bit more advanced, but not too much. So I wouldn't worry about it. So what we're going to look at is opacity in this video. That's kind of what we're going to focus on, being able to see through things. So if I look over here, I've got an opacity input, but it's grayed out. I can't use it. There's a whole bunch I can use, but I can't use those. So how in the world do I unlock those features? Well, if you come over here to the details panel and just make sure that you don't have anything selected or you select the material node, that way you can get the correct uh, material node details over here so that you can go ahead and edit them. So let's go over here and you'll see that we have some material parameters here. I'm going to go to the blend mode. I'm going to change the default opaque mode to a translucent mode. And we have a few options here, but I'm going to pick translucent because that's going to allow us to do objects that you can see through. Okay, they can have transparency. Now when I switch it, you notice that the opacity input is now finally available for us to use. So if I come over here and look at this object, it's going to look like this. It almost looks a little bit self-illuminating but we can't see through it. There's no transparency yet because we haven't defined the opacity yet on the material. So the way that we can do that is either through like constant vectors, like a one vector, something like that. We can also use textures. And I have some nodes here that I set up earlier just to go a little bit faster. And whoops, looks like I grabbed onto the wrong nodes here or one wrong node or a couple so I'll just untangle that mess real quick okay so here I have my opacity stuff and it's pretty straightforward all it is is a texture that's going to be multiplied by a one vector and that's going to feed into the opacity input of the material which is pretty straightforward so I'm going to get rid of that comment box it was just kind of getting in the way in this tutorial. So I've got a texture coordinate node plugged into my texture. My texture is plugged into a multiply node, and that's being multiplied by one vector, which is set at 0 0.25. So the way transparency works is like this. Let me just show you here. I'm going to plug this texture into the opacity slot. You're going to see in the preview window what happened, but let's jump into the viewport here. Oh, and whoa, what in the world happened here? Some parts of the object have just completely disappeared, while some parts are completely opaque and we can't see through them. Basically, the white checkers on this checkerboard material are opaque. We, we can't see through them. They're opaque. Uh, it's like trying to see through a solid wall. But the black checkers are completely invisible. So why in the world did that happen? Well, if I look at the texture being used here, it's black and white. And the way that transparency works in Unreal, as well as most other game engines is anything that's white is not going to be see-through anything that's black can be seen through by the player camera okay so black is invisible white is visible white is opaque black is translucent okay any shades of gray in between black and white are going to make different shades of transparency all right and I could show you that next with a very simple and basic example I'm going to create a multiply node and plug in my texture to that and then I'm going to go ahead and plug in a constant one vector which is just a number into the multiply and I'm going to plug the multiply into the opacity so basically we're going to multiply this checkerboard texture by a number right now it's set to zero and if I jump back into the viewport well looks like our sphere disappeared what happened did it get deleted no it's still there What's happening is I'm multiplying all of the colors in the texture by zero. And if you remember math from when you were in school, anything multiplied by zero is zero. In the world of colors, zero is black, one is white. So if the entire value of our texture is being uh, turned into zero, that's why we get nothing. We're completely invisible. So if I set it back, we'll get the white checkers that we can't see through and then the black checkers we can see through as you can see in my example so if I set that to one anything multiplied by one is it's going to be itself so the white parts of the texture have value of one 
one multiplied by one is one and that's why the the white areas are visible and the whole thing doesn't become invisible like before so it's a pretty straightforward uh, idea so what happens if I set this instead of 0 or 1 what happens if I use 0 0.5 well let's see if we jump back into Unreal we'll be able to see that the black checkers are still invisible but now the white checkers guess what we can still see through them or now we can see through them before we couldn't see through them now they're sort of semi-transparent almost like looking through a tinted window okay so we can see the shadow behind the object here and the reason that's happening again is because we're multiplying 0 0.5 by the texture so now white multiplied by 0 0.5 equals 0 0.5 if you go ahead and multiply 1 times 0 0.5 you're gonna get 0.5 so what we're doing is we're cutting the white in half and making it gray a medium gray which is 0 0.5 and when something is a medium gray, you're going to be able to see it a little bit. Okay? So if something's kind of gray, then you'll be able to see kind of through something. If something is white, you won't be able to see through it. If something's black, you will be able to see through it. In fact, it'll appear as if though the object's not even there at all and it's completely invisible. So that's pretty important to understand how the different shades of black and white and gray are going to affect the opacity of the object and this is great because you can use textures to control this do like tinted windows on a race car in a racing game for example okay so the next part here is opacity mask and right now it's grayed out so how in the world do we get access to the opacity mask well that's pretty easy I'm gonna make sure that I go back here to the material settings I'm gonna change from translucent the blend mode I'm gonna change the mask and now we can see that opacity is grayed out but opacity mask is available for us to use so I'm gonna look at this object and it looks just like before except now it's shiny it's got reflections specularity roughness all that good stuff all that stuff went away before I don't know if you noticed but it actually went away because opacity shaders don't support that but a shader with uh, that's set to masked does support that okay but it works a little bit different than the translucent shader and we'll get to see that in a moment so what I'm gonna do is for my content browser I'm gonna pull in some textures and stuff over here so I'm gonna pull in a normal map and a texture and if I look at my texture here it's basically a chain link fence and if I look at the alpha it has an alpha channel okay now alphas are outside the scope of this tutorial so I'm not going to go over how to create alphas and say something like Photoshop but there's lots of information out there about alphas so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this texture into the base color and then down here below the red green and blue pins is a little gray pin that's the alpha pin I'm going to take the alpha pin and plug it into the opacity mass parameter and what that's going to give me if I switch over to a little polyplane preview I'm going to have basically a fence, a chain link fence. I'm going to take the normal map and I'm going to plug that into the normal of the object. And that's going to make the fence look a little bit more realistic and make it pop out. But let me take this texture coordinate node, which is already set to a U and a V tiling of 4. I'm going to plug that into both of those, uh, the diffuse texture and the normal map. So now this starts to look more like a fence. And if I come back over here, you can see what I have. Basically, the actual chain itself, the metal parts of the chain link fence are opaque and they're completely visible. But the sections in between, the gaps in between the chain link fence are invisible and that's thanks to that alpha map which is doing that for me. Now I'm going to turn this into a two-sided material by checking on a two-sided flag, make the changes and come back in here. This will allow us to render out the back side and now we can see the front and the back being rendered at the same time again that's a little bit more expensive to render but it's okay it's not gonna make the game crash or anything like that but it is off by default so by turning it on I get this sort of object it starts to kinda of look like a fishnet actually so in video games if you were to make a fence like this you don't model out every single little piece of metal wire mesh 
that would be extremely expensive to create and render and all that stuff. What you would create is a polyplane and then apply texture like this with an opacity mask. So using a shader with opacity mask is extremely good for doing stuff like this. It's great for like nets, fences, gates, uh, anything basically that needs to have some kind of gaps in between geometry but that would be way too expensive to model out or sculpt in a 3D package. All right, so that takes care of opacity mask. I'm gonna go ahead and reapply my normal map as well as my texture to the base color and all that good stuff and try to get my material back to how it was before. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna end this video here. There's still a lot more to cover in inputs for materials in Unreal 4. Um, I'll see you in the next video where we'll continue talking about uh, materials.